day off. Hi, Rapstein with your morning flash update for this Monday, and we're at the 22nd of January, 2024, the time 825 a.m. Central Time. Sorry I couldn't put out your weekend updates. Uh, a couple of times a year I get a skin treatment that makes me very photosensitive. As a young boy, I, I'm very fair, and as I got older, I developed melanoma that's very much under control with these treatments that I do. And uh, sometimes I just get so photosensitive, I can't even be under the camera lights. That's what happened to me this weekend. Other times I can do it. You just don't know. It depends how it reacts. So I apologize. What a weekend for weather, right? Uh, you know, we live in, I live in Chicago, literally around the lake. And when I say around the lake, under an hour away. We have what's called the snow belt. That's how everything goes over. 35 inches of snow in Michigan City. Reminded me of New Buffalo when they were getting all the fans out there to uh, go into the stadium and free up the seats. <laughs> it was that kind of snow. We'll be coming to an end. We're going to be in the 40s and now rain. But what about these markets? So let's take a look for a moment here at the news. The conference board is going to come out with their leading, lagging, and coincident indicators at 9 o'clock. The Bank of uh, uh, Japan and the European Central Bank meet. Bank of Japan tomorrow, European Central Bank on Thursday. I expect both to sit tight. This is a huge week for corporate earnings. And Ron DeSantis drops out of the Republican bid for the U.S. presidency, which means it's now a race. I don't know how much of a horse race, but it is a race between Nikki Haley and ex-President Trump. I think we'll have a pretty good tell with the New Hampshire numbers tomorrow. This should be something that she does well in. I mean, it's her type of base if from everything I'm reading. She doesn't do well there. I don't know where you go with it other than say, hey, we're going to have the, uh, the game again again, between Presidents Biden and ex-President Trump, and we will see how that's going to play out. I hear that there's movement on the border wall. Haven't seen what it is yet, but uh, there's a lot of talk in the news about it. Uh, and President Trump's definitely got his hand in there with Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, uh, definitely offering uh, his viewpoints. How's that for me using something nicely? His viewpoints on what should be done. On the energy markets, we have not seen any situation that takes the Houthis out of the Red Sea problems. What we are seeing is a little bit of a bounce today. It's interesting because you have one part of this that shows how world trade is getting crushed by what is going on. I wrote last night in my full research about the cost of shipping, how they're up 17 to 30 percent, depending on what you're shipping, where you're going with your ships and so on, cost of insurance. And that's going to be passed on to the consumer where contracts allow that to be passed on. And today, as I understand it, Libya, uh, they've reached an agreement where some of the oil's being turned back on, so that's a little bit of supply. It's not impacting the market, and nothing negative impacts this market. This is all about, you know what it is, the Magnificent Seven. They keep running, and they pull other parts of the market with it, and that's what's going on there. Silver getting crushed. That's the right word to use today. Down 60 cents copper market getting hurt. This is again, Dr. Copper. It's telling us there's something wrong with the industrial part of the uh, markets. When you look at Bitcoin, it was just down over $1,000. In fact, it was down $1,200. And that's a market that just fell in a week from 49400 to 40300 You think that's for the faint of heart? <laughs> I don't think so. Bonds and notes giving back, if you will, a little bit of the yield that they picked up last week. Very flat market that we have in the grains at this point in time. Now, I cover all this in the morning and give you trade ideas uh, each and every time that I possibly can in what we call our morning combo. So let me tell you how this works. At about 5, 5.15 in the morning, right in there, I start recording and I review for you at least 40 charts on all the futures markets. At 9 o'clock, I come back at you and do the same in ETFs, individual stocks, and spiders. This is all part of what we call our combo combination. And the reason they're so important is they give you an idea what both markets are looking at, what they're trying to do, and where you're at. I cover the NVIDIA, for example. I cover bitcoins that we're just talking about. I'll talk about currency plays. I'll talk about what's going on in the movie theater stocks. How's Netflix doing? So on and so forth, all through that. So 
If you're looking for a trade ideas, I mean specific, stop orders, where to come in, short term, long term, cover all this in both of them, why don't you give it a try? All you need to do to get this is you go to our website, irapstein.com, and when you get there, go to the word research. Okay, it's in the top right. Give it a click, you'll see the combo offer. You can also move right up here. It'll take you right to that area. You'll see an icon up there. I'm Ira, I'll catch up with you at the end of the trade day. You have a great trading one yourself. Talk to you later.